you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question before listening on. In part A, we're being asked to calculate the final angular speed of the wheel after a time of 2.3 seconds. Now we know that the final angular velocity would equal the initial angular velocity plus the angular acceleration times the time. The question notes that the disk starts from rest, so the initial angular velocity would be zero. The angular acceleration is actually given to us in a standard unit of 2.50 radians per second squared, and then the time given is 2.3 seconds. So we can pick up our calculators and determine this final angular velocity. And when we do that, we should get 5.75 radians per second. This is technically the final angular velocity. Since it's positive, that just means that the disk is rotating in the counterclockwise fashion. Technically, speed is directionless, so we don't have to say really positive or negative. We can just say 5.75 radians per second. So this is the correct answer to part A. For part B, to find the linear velocity, that's the same thing as the tangential velocity. So we simply take the radius and multiply it by the angular velocity. Now the radius needs to be determined by taking half of the diameter. So that's going to be 22.5 centimeters. We also have to make sure we convert that into the standard unit of meters. So we can just do a quick conversion there. We know that one meter is 100 centimeters. So that would put the radius into its standard unit. And then we'll multiply it by the angular velocity that we determined in part A, which was 5.75 radians per second. And that turns out to be approximately 1.29 meters per second. So this would be the linear velocity and the correct answer to part B. Part B also wants us to find the tangential acceleration. Now tangential acceleration, which we can symbolize as AT, is equal to the radius times the angular acceleration. We'll set up the radius in the same way that we did for the tangential velocity. And then we'll also multiply by the angular acceleration, which was given to us again in the question as 2.50 radians per second squared. And that works out to be roughly 0.563 meters per second squared. So this is the other part of the correct answer to B. Now to find the final position in degrees, we can use one of the rotational kinematics formulas. We know that the final angular velocity squared is equal to the initial angular velocity squared plus two times the angular acceleration times the angular displacement. Now this started from rest, so we can actually eliminate the initial angular velocity, and then we can divide by two alpha to isolate the angular displacement. So we'll plug in the final angular velocity, which was 5.75, and then the angular acceleration, which again was 2.5. When we crunch that down, we're going to get 6.61. Now that turns out to be in radians. So what we're going to actually have to do is convert that into degrees, since the question wants degrees. And we know that there are pi radians in 180 degrees. So if we perform that conversion, we would get approximately 379 degrees. Now just be careful, this is also not the correct answer, because we have to remember that this point P began at an angle of 57.3 degrees. So what we have to do is take this angular displacement and add it on to the 57.3 degrees to get the total angular displacement. In essence, what we had calculated was actually a change in angular displacement. So that really was the appropriate symbol to use. So we'll take the change in angular displacement, add it to the initial angular displacement, and that gives us roughly 436 degrees. Now, we could enter that as our answer. Another way of doing that would be to consider the coordinate axes. So let's take a look. So we begin along the positive x-axis, and what we do is we measure an angle counterclockwise. If we go all the way around once, that's 360 degrees there. We've got to keep going, though, because we have to get to 436. So if we subtract 436 by 360, we're going to get approximately 76 degrees. So that means we would just have to go an additional 76 degrees to get this final angle. So we could report the angle as 76 degrees counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So that could be the final answer to part C.
Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up and subscribe. You can send your own question into this email address and I'll do my best to answer.